TPMS, Tire Pressure Monitoring System, Sensor Programming, and what you need to know. Using the scanner I like to use for that, we got the Maxisys MS906TS. They no longer sell this. Now they sell the same exact thing, but it's pro. So this connects via Bluetooth to the vehicle outside. We have four clonable Eklund from Napa tire sensors. First thing you need to know when you buy the clonable sensors, they are more expensive than if you buy the quick sensors or the Altel sensors. The Altels are my, my top brand. Uh, they got the quick release button on the back. They're awesome, but you need Altel software to program them. We're showing you today how you can do it yourself without a fancy dancy scanner. So you're gonna to wanna to make sure you get the clonable style. You may have aluminum or rubber valve stems. Make sure you get the same style. There is no frequency option on this year Sierra we're doing. So it is 315 megahertz. What I like about Chevy Cadillac is some of them, you put the clonable sensor in and all you have to do is disconnect the battery, let it sit five, 15 minutes, reconnect the battery and it'll do like a self relearn test. I ran into that on some of them. What's cool about the scanner is if there's a manual procedure for you to do it, then you can do it manually without a scanner and it'll tell you. Right now we're doing tire checks. We have bad sensors, all four are getting changed. Before dismounting the tires and installing the sensors, we wanna make sure we got four good sensors, right? Battery life isn't low, they're actually programmable. So before you install them, get your tire sensors programmed. You can see on the first three, I've already did my trigger on each sensor. They're good, they're reading zero PSI because they're not installed in a, in a tire. This is our last one to check now. And we're not even gonna take it out of the box. We're gonna go ahead, there's a radio receiver right here that'll communicate with the sensor. You put the box right there and we're triggering our last one, the rear driver side tire. We hit trigger, bam, picks it up right away. You have battery life is okay on all four sensors, all four triggered. So we know we can install these sensors. We go to a relearn on the vehicle and right here, if there is a manual relearn procedure, it will give you the manual procedure. You don't have to use um, a scanner. Before we go any further, we're gonna write on this box, this is rear left tire. When they trigger, it'll also give you your sensor IDs. You can punch that in manually. There's uh, many ways to skin a cat here. OBD2 relearn, trigger, blah, 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 all that stuff. Manual relearn, read DTCs, the trouble codes, clear them, OBD2 relearn. There we go, we're in relearn mode, click yes, and yes, there's the double chirp. That means we are in relearn mode. You can also manually do these by uh, letting out tire pressures. A lot, of, a lot of times that's one way to do it. Some vehicles will automatically relearn if you put clonable sensors in. So we're gonna start with the front left tire. We have all our boxes labeled and we wanna keep our sensors away from the scanner. We don't want to accidentally pick up a sensor and then it'd be, you know, then you put it in the wrong tire. All right, so we got our first sensor front left. Now it's gonna chirp every time it is successful. So we're gonna hit trigger. You heard the scanner pick it up and now we are programmed on that first sensor. Now we'll go through and do the other three. You'll see when I hit the last sensor, it should do a double chirp to show everything was successful. Front right. See, it takes a little more than triggering because it's uh, actually relearning. Rear right. And our final sensor, rear left. We should get that double chirp. And we didn't get a double chirp. Um, some vehicles don't do the double chirp afterwards. I don't know why that is, it just happens. But we should be all programmed ready to put these sensors in the tires. I've recently had 
two comments that I noticed. I can't see all comments. I get a couple thousand a day uh, asking about tire programming and one specifically, will this one do tire programming and how to do it? Well, there's a video for you, bud. It's just a quick, simple, easy as that. Now that scanner was 3000 brand new when it first came out. Now the pro version, which does everything that does plus some ECU coding and it's got a fancier grip around it, looks cooler. That's in my, uh, in my Amazon shop for like 1450. So half the price of what I paid when it was new and it's an upgraded version with more stuff. You gotta make sure it's got that TS at the end. That means the scanner Pro TS. So it'll be a 906 Pro TS. Um, you gotta make sure it's got that if you wanna do tire sensors. And on the front of the scanner, it'll show a little radio signal. That means it's got the built-in radio so it can communicate with things that run off of radio waves like tire sensors. Now your tire sensors are typically gonna last seven to 10 years. I think the minimum rating on any of them are seven years. So when you start finding out your tires are like, oh, sometimes it says it's at zero and then you take it out for another drive and it's fine. Then you take it out. That means your battery's probably getting weak on it. Um, see that a lot around the 10 year mark or so. But hope this video helped. Hope you found it interesting. That's programming on the Altel Maxisys MS 906 TS.